Hi Trek leaders, it is October, can't believe it's October already, but uh, we are in the midst of our fall moving forward through the Bible chronologically and this weekend we talk about the Passover. And last week, uh, Dick presented us with the plagues all in order and talked about how they were so important that they weren't just random things that God did to annoy the Egyptians, that he intentionally defeated each one of the things that they worshipped. And this week, uh, we talk about the Passover, which is sometimes a difficult thing to talk about because there is death involved in this, that the angel of, of death comes over. And, and really moves through the land of Egypt and that by the blood being spread on the doorpost, the Israelites were saved from that punishment. And so a couple of the things that have come up as we've been looking through the curriculum this week um, have given me a little bit of pause that I don't want to just send you in unprepared. And so I want to walk through a couple of questions and just give you some perspective. I would also really encourage you to read the equip section because it really unpacks things very well. But it, the questions that I want to unpack here are, why is Jesus called the Lamb of God? How is Jesus connected to the Passover feast? How is the Israel's, Israelites' act of painting blood on the doorpost similar to our act of belief in Jesus? And how does God lead us to new life? This week is all about new life. And Jesus is like the Lamb. He's called the Lamb of God. And the Israelites would have understood this because they would have understood from their history being passed down that their salvation in the Passover when the, the angel moved over the land was that they had sacrificed a lamb. And through that sacrifice, they were given life. And in today's terms, when we refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God, He is that sacrifice for our sins. Not just covering them over, but actually removing them completely from us and forgiving us and giving us salvation, justification, new life. Um, and a couple of the other questions. How is, how is Jesus connected to the Passover feast? There again, the whole issue of the shedding of blood and that our salvation is in the blood. Uh, and that might seem a little weird. To your boys, that's going to be like, hey, this is cool. We get to talk about blood. To your girls or to others, it might be like, that's kind of nasty. And when we talk about blood, that's a very Christian, Bible-based terminology, but sometimes we may have to make that clear to our kids, is to not get hung up on the blood, but get hung up on the fact that Jesus gave everything so that we could have salvation. The Israelites were asked to give something of high value so that they could live. God gave His very Son so that we could have eternal life and we could be free from sin just like the Israelites were freed from bondage and slavery. Uh, that may be a little bit easier thing to talk about because once, once we get stuck on the blood again, sometimes we start talking about the substance of blood and not the real meaning behind it. The, the last question for the older kids is how does the Israelites act of painting the blood on the doorpost similar to our act of belief? And in my opinion, and there may be different opinions here, in my opinion, this is where faith comes in. The Israelites had to look and say, it's really this simple. Is it really like this, that all I have to do is paint my doorpost and that's going to save my family? It isn't something I can do. It isn't a hovering over or protecting. And, and God stayed true to his word. He said, you put the blood on the doorpost and I will save your family. And our faith in Jesus Christ is the same way. It really is as simple as saying, Jesus, I believe I'm sorry for my sins. I want you to be a part of my life. I not only want you to be a part, but I want you to be first place as my Lord. I want you to take away my sin as my Savior. Using those terms are gonna, is going to be very difficult with your kids, but breaking down the terminology will be helpful this week because the whole concept is God leads us to new life. And this is going to be a perfect opportunity for you to unpack what Jesus has done for you, it might be that you tell your story of how you came to know Jesus and how he became part of your life and how he forgave your sins. It might be that you look in the Bible and explain some of those things that maybe some of them don't know and walk them through how Jesus sacrificed himself for us so that we could have eternal life. I think it's going to be a great week, and this is a week not to be taken lightly because salvation is a serious thing. Uh, after your reflect questions, you're going to have a chance to do a create exercise. And as Jill and I were looking through it this week, we noticed that maybe it's a little confusing in the way that it's worded in the writing. And so Jill's going to come in just a second and explain to us what this create project is all about and how it ties into the topic for the day. Hi, Trek leaders. For Create this week, we're going to be doing something a little different than we normally do. Usually we're making a Create project for the kids to process um, by creating something, by drawing or writing something down. But this week, we're going to be working together um, to create a game. Um, now, the point of this game is to create it, not to play it. Um, we're actually going to have a chance to play it on the Remember and Celebrate week on November 21st. But really, the point is to be making the game this week. 
And the reason that we're making this game is because we're trying to figure out how do we get from w one place to getting closer to God, so finishing closer to God. So basically what you're going to be doing is creating a game. Now you get to decide um, what the starting point is going to be and what the finishing point is going to be. Now you might choose something like um, that relates to the kids, like when I was born and when I go to heaven. It could be um, all different kinds of things that you could do. Um, you could do even something as simple as doing Egypt as the beginning and the promised land as the finish and fill in the game. Now for different age groups you're going to want to do different things. For the second and third graders, you're probably going to want to set out the start and the finish and the path before the hour even begins. But for the older kids, they, let them be creative. Let them help you develop the game and let them be a part of it. Okay, so there's two other pieces to this game. There's two cards, a detour card and a move ahead card. The detour cards you're going to take and you're going to place a few spots in the board that are going to be detours. Now at the detour places, that's going to be a negative place, a place that brings us away from the goal. So it's going to take us away. Either it's going to be a lose a turn or move back. But you want to have the kids work with you to, de to de develop these cards so that there's a reason. So if, it's, if your goal is to go from Egypt to the promised land, it could be that they disobey God or they didn't trust God. So they have to move back or they lose their turn. But if, then we have the move ahead cards. Now the move ahead cards are positive. Those are exciting things to get. And so those are going to be move ahead a few spaces. It was we trusted God or we obeyed him or we spent time with him. And so all those different things could be a move ahead card and you're going to work with the kids to develop it according to your game. Now if you have any other questions or you want more ideas, just give me a call or send me an email and I'd love to help you out. Thanks so much for being patient with us this week as it took a few more days than usual to get this resource to you. We hope it's helpful to you. Thanks. We'll see you Sunday.